Hey guys, before you watch this video, I just wanted to let you know that I know how terrible my hair extensions look in this video. I should never have worn them, but we all learn from our mistakes and this was a big one. They look absolutely terrible. So I just wanted to let you know that I am well aware that my extensions do not blend, do not match, and it was a mistake. Okay, enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Lex, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post weekly videos about beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and more. So if you're not already, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and join the fam. And ring the little itty bitty bell down there to turn on your notifications so that you get notified every time I post a new video. So I've been doing a lot of late night shopping, like laying in bed, just browsing the internet, and buying a bunch of stuff that I want but don't necessarily need. I'm sure that a lot of people watching this video can relate. So I've always wanted to try the brand Hourglass Cosmetics. There's not a lot of luxury, vegan, cruelty-free cosmetic lines out there, and I always see Hourglass and Sephora, and their stuff always looks so luxurious, but since it's luxurious, it is a little bit expensive. So I've been working hard here on the YouTube, and I've decided that I wanted to splurge a little bit and try some Hourglass Cosmetics for you guys, and let you know if I think that it is worth the money. Also, I put in my old extensions, and I tried to custom blend them into my hair as best as I could, because number one, my hair is like this short. I recently cut it all off because I had so many bleached dead ends and I wanted it to grow and I haven't had my hair short probably never because I've always wanted long like luscious locks so I recently cut my hair up to here so we have that and then also the fact that this is the only part of my hair that has bleach left in it so like they barely just blend in with my extensions. I don't want to wait any longer so let's jump right into the video. So I didn't buy their full line of products because like I said, they're very expensive. I just bought a bunch of the staples that I would use in my makeup routine. So the first thing that I bought was their Veil Mineral Primer and it's oil free and it has SPF 15 in there. I've heard a lot of good things about their foundation. So I figured I would pair it with the primer and see if it makes it look extra good. And I've never used anything from this brand before. So this is all first impressions, new for me. And one little secret slash hack that I have is if you're shopping for a brand that you've never tried before and it's a little bit expensive, or you're not sure if you're gonna like it or not grab the travel size because it's like usually half the price And then if you don't like it at least you don't have a whole big bottle to get rid of and then if you do like it You could just buy the full size next time So a lot of this stuff I bought in the travel size because like I said, it's very expensive and I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it But what I do like is it comes in this like gla frosted glass container So it still feels very luxurious even though it's the little mini. Oh It's liquidy very liquidy. I thought it was gonna be more of a cream since it's a primer, but it's not. It does, I don't know if you can see, it kind of has like an illuminating glow to it, which is fine. I mean, I like a nice dewy, like illuminated looking foundation. It doesn't really have a strong smell, but you can kind of see how it's an illuminating, kind of like iridescent, kind of has a blue tint to it. It definitely mattified down the back of my hand and gave it a smooth velvety texture. My skin is on the dry side, so I usually opt for a more dewy primer, but I always put a serum and a moisturizer on my face, so my skin usually is a little bit hydrated anyway. And since we are entering the hotter summer months, I don't mind a more mattifying primer to prevent my skin from getting a little bit greasy and oily from sweating so much, because I'm a hot girl. Let me get a mirror up in this business. Yeah, my skin does look very glowy and I feel like it did minimize my pores a little bit. So the next product that I picked up from Hourglass was the Vanish Seamless Foundation Stick and I'm a little bit nervous about this one because I swatched it in, in Sephora like a long time ago and I put it in the notes in my phone because I knew that I wanted to do this video. From what I put in my phone, I'm the shade beige but now that I'm seeing it again in person, it does kind of have an orangey like golden undertone, which I'm a little bit nervous about. And they do have a liquid foundation, but I bought the stick foundation because I always hear Laura Lee rave about how their stick foundation is one of her favorites. And I only have one other stick foundation, so I thought it would be fun to try something new. The container feels very nice and luxurious, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. Hopefully it matches me. Oh boy, I don't know about this. Formula is highly concentrated. Only a small amount is needed. I mean, I like a full coverage look anyway. It says it's highly concentrated. Yeah, they're right. It's very, very concentrated. This is an M6 Kabuki brush from Morphe, and I'm just gonna try to blend my life away. Um, it's not that bad of a match for me. It just definitely is a little bit tanner than my skin tone. Summer's right around the corner anyway, so it'll match me eventually. All right, I'm gonna use a beauty blender that's a little bit damp and try to press it into my skin and also maybe like 
absorb a little bit of the foundation that's on my skin right now. I definitely love the finish on the foundation though. It looks beautiful on my skin, but it's just not the right shade for me currently, but I think that I'll grow into it eventually when I get a tan. I mean, it smoothed out everything though. Like my skin looks amazing. I hope that it translates on camera how incredible the finish looks. When I was in Sephora and I was like kind of swatching everything, their concealer wasn't really doing it for me. This was like many, many months ago, like way before this whole quarantine started, before it was even a thing. Their uh, concealer was a little bit liquidy and like runny and I haven't really heard too many good things about it. Haven't really heard anything about it. So I decided to skip on the concealer. So I'm gonna use good old Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Medium because this turned out to be a very full coverage foundation. So I'm gonna pair it with a nice full coverage concealer for a full coverage memento because I need that in my life today. And don't worry, we have plenty of other Hourglass products coming right up. I'm just gonna blend that out with this mini beauty blender that I got in my Kinder Beauty Box. So if you haven't seen my Kinder Beauty Box haul, Go watch that after you finish watching this one, of course. I will leave it in the description box down below so you don't have to do any work. You could just click the link and head right on over. And since this isn't a tutorial, this is kind of a first impressions trying new makeup, I'm just gonna speed through me blending out this concealer because I'm just bouncing it repeatedly into my skin. Okay, so now that my concealer is all blended out, I have another Hourglass product to try out, and that is their Veil Translucent Setting Powder. And I would always see this in Sephora and like look at it, and I was like, oh my God. I don't know if, I don't know if this one's gonna have it, but I think it had like a little like H, like the little holes where the powder comes out. I like how their packaging is very minimal, but it's also very luxurious and like classy looking. This also has a frosted glass texture, and this is a mini travel size also, so I like how they're consistent with their packaging and they still make you feel like you're getting a nice product even though it's a mini travel size. <gasps> yes, and this does have the little, I hope you can see, it has like the little H. So something fun that I also picked up was this hourglass brush because it is kind of hard to find cruelty free makeup brushes that are really good and I always see people using this brush and I don't know why it just looks so satisfying to me. So I'm going to set everywhere under my eyes, my forehead, my chin where I put the concealer. So I'm just going to dip it into the setting powder. I'm so excited. I don't know why I'm so excited for this combo right now. So the setting powder is really mattifying everything down really nicely. I do feel like I have a little bit of gray but also like the bags under my eyes are terrible. But I think I also wanna try using the beauty sponge just to see if there's any noticeable differences using the brush or the sponge. I do like to bake around my nose because that's pretty much the only spot where I get super greasy. I really like to pack on the powder there and just kind of let it sit for a few minutes. And on my forehead because I get expression lines because I'm a human and we get lines on our face. And if you have lines underneath your eyes or smile lines or forehead like expression lines. Unless you get Botox, it's not going anywhere. No amount of makeup in the world is gonna fix it. It can maybe make it look better. Some products are better than others, but it's not gonna make it go away. So don't worry, live your life. All right, I'm gonna let this bake for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so my face is done baking and guys, I'm getting kind of nervous that I'm gonna love all of these products and like they're gonna be my new favorites because they're like a little bit expensive. I mean like if it's like worth it, it's worth it, like whatever, but my skin looks so good. So next up is contour and I have the ambient lighting bronzer in the shade luminous bronze light oh my god okay wait until you see this packaging how gorgeous is this this packaging almost reminds me of the Fenty a little bit like that golden mirror okay I'm gonna go ahead and swirl my brush into here so what I'm noticing right away is it's a very subtle glow like I could see it but it's not like like contour. It does kind of have a little bit of like a loomy finish to it, but I wanna see if I could just build up the pigment a little bit. The other side of the brush that's a little bit more precise. It kind of, it looks like I'm wearing highlighter already. I'm just gonna go back over it with the fluffy brush just to make sure that everything is diffused and blended out nicely. So this usually, this isn't as sharp as a contour slash like bronzer that I would usually do, but it did give my face a nice glow. And I really do like the finish and the color of it. And the way that they advertise their brand and the way that their brand ambassadors do makeup on models on their Instagram and stuff it doesn't seem like they're super intense super full coverage like in your face brand so just keep that in mind when you're shopping their products aren't going to be super pigmented and super heavy but they're also not meant to be that way okay so this is the last hourglass face product that I have and it is the ambient light blush and I got the shade luminous flush and my favorite blush especially to wear in the summer is a corally peachy pink blush so this one was the closest to that that I could find I don't understand why brand 
brands do this. Um, this is the size of the bronzer, okay? And then this is the size of the blush. Why would I not want the same size of each? It's like literally, this is 0.15 ounces and this is 0.39 ounces. Why would I not want the same amount of blush and bronzer if I'm gonna be using them together? Fenty did that with their cream blush and bronzer. I don't understand. Swirling some of this around on the same brush that I used for bronzer. See, the thing is like, it's not going on super pigmented and I don't know if it's the brush because it's too fluffy that it's like kind of diffusing the product too quickly or if like this is just not meant to be a super pigmented blush. Hopefully this is clean. This is a Morphe E4 angled brush and I'm just gonna grab some on here and see if it makes a difference. It's definitely cute, but it's very, very subtle. Like more subtle than I would usually do my makeup. Again, maybe I could have gone for darker shades in these, but like I said, I swatched it so long ago. I'm gonna try to pick up as much blush as I can on my brush. Spray it with some dewy set. The best setting spray on earth. Okay, that made a little bit of a difference. I don't know if you are gonna be able to see on camera, but that definitely made a little bit of a difference. Okay, gonna do the same thing on the other side so I don't look crazy. So just to finish off the face, I don't have an hourglass product, but this is a new product that I've been wanting to try for a while now, and it's the Cover Effects Custom Enhancer Drops. And I always see them doing it on Instagram and it looks like such a nice like glossy glow with the face makeup that I have going on today. It's a perfect time to try this out. And I got it in the shade Rose Gold. And these could be mixed in with your foundation or used as a liquid highlighter. Definitely gonna be using it as a liquid highlighter. Oh my God, beautiful. Put some more on the back of my hand and then pick it up with a beauty blender. That's how I see them doing it. Picking some up on a beauty blender and just kind of like moving it around so it's not too concentrated. Oh my goodness why have i not done this sooner my skin looks so good like shocked at how much i love this and kind of how natural it looks because usually i like cut my contour i bake my face to high heavens pack on the concealer pack on the contour the bronzer and everything and i mean don't get me wrong i love a nice like fresh dewy natural glow i love this i'm just gonna spray my face with some setting spray just to lock everything in place because I'm going to finish up the rest of the look off camera and then be back for the final reveal. Okay guys, so I just did my brows off camera, put on mascara and a lip to finish off the look. I wanted to keep it minimal just to kind of match the skin that I did today. And I feel like it's kind of Patrick Ta vibe, very young, fresh and glowy. And I absolutely love it. I will link all the products that I use in the description down below, including my outfit details if you guys are interested. But honestly, I loved everything that I use today. And I probably will end up purchasing the full size products when I run out. I'll probably next time go for a darker bronzer and blush now that I know that it's not super pigmented, it's more layerable. But overall, my skin looks amazing. And I know that I said before, if you do have lines, smile lines, expression lines on your face, makeup isn't gonna make them disappear. But I will say that with the makeup that I have on today, this is probably the best that my face has ever looked. The Mineral Veil setting powder really smoothed out the texture and the lines in my skin. And the foundation made my skin look literally airbrushed. Like I actually can't believe it. If you guys like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't already, hit the subscribe button down below and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a weekly upload. And leave me a comment, anything you want. If you have feedback or any video ideas that you would like to see from me, I would love to hear from you guys. You could also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Alexa West. I'm always on there. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next video.